Pudge. <laughs> Wanna say hi? <laughs> hi, my name is Ella and I'm the Plants Meow and welcome to my channel. I hope everyone has had a fantastic holiday and a very happy new year. I do apologize about not putting out a video last week. I had recorded it, but it turns out the video wasn't focused on my face the whole time and I didn't realize. So this is the video that I wanted to put out. I'm re-recording it now. So I thought it was appropriate right now to start off to New Year really with a wish list. So right now I don't have too many plants on my wish list, but the ones I do have, I have meticulously picked because I don't want to add too much more to my collection as it is fairly large, probably the largest I would ever want it. And I am fully expecting these plants to grow very large. I don't want to keep them small. I want them to get large. That is definitely my intention. But that does mean that I'm going to eventually probably have to pick and choose certain ones to keep. And it also means I don't really have room to bring a lot in. So the ones I have here are ones that I really, really do want. And <laughs> yeah. But really quickly before we start, if you watch my Simplified Anthurium Care Guide, you'll notice in the back my Pappy Anthurium. I really just kind of wanted to give you guys an update of how she was. So this was previously her largest leaf, and now it is this one. Very, very large. <laughs> I am super stoked, very happy about it. It's exceeded my expectations. All of my new leaves coming in have been impressing me very much. I'm very very happy. <laughs> happy plants are bigger plants. <laughs> but just look how phenomenal she looked. Absolutely incredible. <sighs> but I don't even know if I could properly do a head test with this one. It's just... <laughs> so the first plants I really want to get into are philodendron. And I really... this list is very small as I really have all the philodendron that I want. I don't really see myself really wanting any others. So after thinking long and hard, so after thinking long and hard about what philodendrons I want, that horse is a cat. <laughs> I have really come down to the only philodendron I would want right now is the philodendron white knight. Guys, <laughs> I have two cats on my screen porch at the moment and there's two in here that are acting out because they're kind of jealous, but they also don't want to go outside because it's too cold. So they're just being weird. I don't know. <laughs> so the Philodendron White Knight. What I like about this one is on the foliage, the variegation has this very, very bright white. The white on it is brilliant. It is such a creamy white color. Sorry, my cats, they're just throwing me off. And then the petioles themselves are this beautiful red color. I love red petioles. Anytime I see them on a plant, that really is kind of a checklist thing for me. And it actually has this kind of like white sheathing that goes around that. And I think it looks like candy basically. And I think it just, it's super cute. I would love it. And I'm very interested in that one. So for the sake of just having it on my list, the next one, the next one's gonna be the Philodendron Spiritus Sancti. Now I'm putting this on here for the sake that if I came across this one and it was affordable, yes, I would definitely want it. I feel like it is a collector's dream to have one of these as a Philodendron collector. It's obviously the ultimate one, but at this moment, it isn't so stunning in my opinion that I would fork out the money at the moment. It would really have to be a good price and I would really have to be in a good place for me to get that particular philodendron. Right now, I am definitely on a no buy. Basically, I've decided I need to stop spending because girls gotta start uh, saving and paying off stuff, so. So there's one more philodendron I would like to bring up, and this was labeled on the website as philodendron pseudovaricosum. So they have posted this on their Facebook and their Instagram. So this is a South American company that just happens to sell plants. They come to a lot of shows here in the U.S. You can pre-order plants, and you can also have them shipped to you if you would like. Now, this particular plant I really like because it has this texture on its leaves that remind me of one of my other philodendrons that I have, and the petioles are just absolutely gorgeous. They're this really dark brown color, it looks like, and they kind of have a fuzziness to them. I think they're stunning. I really want one. I am absolutely head over heels for this philodendron. But yeah. 
So that's my philodendron. So for Monstera, I would love a Monstera stiltipicana. I used to have one of these that had bacterial infections, so I had to dispose of it, but I absolutely love the texture. It has this kind of like pebbliness to it. It's really beautiful. The color is nice. I loved having it. Absolutely would love to have this one back in my collection. Love these plants. Then there's Scandapsis pictus. So I probably don't talk a lot about Scandapsis on my channel and I obviously don't really unbox them because they are usually easy to get at your local garden store. Now these varieties on here are not easy and I absolutely love my Scandapsises. I have two Scandapsis pictus argureus, I have an exotica, a, a silver Leanne, a silver lady. There's an unknown one that I think is called like something splash. <laughs> and I have the Jade Satin one. So these two are pretty much the only ones I'm missing. Obviously there's a lot out there that have been not ID'd yet that I would love to have, but these are kind of like my prized ones I'm looking for and I want so bad, but they are pricey. So the first one is this Jade Satin one. It is a variegated version and it looks like it's just kind of like shades of green. It's so beautiful. I love the Jade one so much. It's amazing to me how the texture of these plants are. It's so hardy and I love them. And I absolutely want this one so bad. So this particular seller that I found that did have it, uh, he doesn't have any that are available right now as they're not rooted, but I am so, looking for it. I know I'm on a no-buy, but I want the Scandapsis, just like this next one. But this next one I might not be able to get because I've asked about prices and it's not <laughs> currently in my price range. <laughs> so this next one is the Scandapsis pictus, and I believe it's the Argureus, but just a white variegated form. So I would love to have this one. I think it's beautiful. I love how both of these are just so unique and different. I'm obsessed with Scandapsis, so I would absolutely be honored to just own these, and I really, really hope I can one day. And the last Scandapsis on my list is the Scandapsis picked a Silver Hero. So this one is reminds me of the Jade Satin, except the opposite in that it's just completely variegated, and I would love to have it. I would honestly love to just pick a wall in my house, put Scandapsis up top, and just let them completely take over that wall. Scandapsis Pictus are amazing and awesome, and if you don't have one, you should totally have one. I know I'm geeking out. You're probably like, oh my god, you have so many rare plants, why are you so obsessed with these trailing plants? And I don't, guys, I don't know, but I really love trailing plants, like, no lie. <laughs> And then another trailing plant that I have on my list is a pothos, so Epipremnum aureum. And this particular one is one that I've seen Gabriella's plants sell, and it is called Jessina. So what I like about this one is it has a lot of like kind of a green, it's basically a variegated form of the jade one with green variegation to it, just like the Skidapsis one I had showed you, but this one's a bit different in kind of in how the variegation is. It's more like a Marble Queen Pothos, except the colors are more muted, and I think it's absolutely elegant and beautiful, and I would love, love to have one. I'm on the wait list, and I keep missing those restocks so bad. So now for my last category, which is my largest, to be honest, and you can probably all guess what this is, and this is Anthurium. Why is your Anthurium section so large, you ask? Well, gee, let me think. Maybe because of philodendron, I can pretty much say that I like this, I don't like that. Right, right, logical person. <laughs> it makes sense. Now when it comes to Anthurium, my brain <laughs> has wired itself to basically think they are all the most beautiful and majestic creatures on the planet. So there is an Anthurium I don't like, which is so problematic for me because the majority of my collection needs to not be plants that are gonna get gigantic. And I mean, they all will, but gosh, aren't they just so majestic and beautiful? Like, I don't know. And they all look very similar too, so people probably think I'm crazy. Like, oh, I can't tell the difference between those two plants. And I'm just like, oh my God, did you see the petiole, the shape of the lobe, da, 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 da. Like, I don't know. To me, like the slight differences look so different to me and it's just insane. Like, I just love them all. Like, I just wanna take all the Anthurium orphans in the world and bring them home. I know I sound crazy. 
But don't get me wrong, the philodendrons I do have, I love, love, love. <laughs> Okay, so the first few anthuriums I'm really going to start off with are going to be some J. Vanini hybrids because how can you not be an anthurium collector and have some J. Vanini hybrids on your list? I mean, I just want them all, right? <laughs> the first one that I would really, really absolutely love is anthurium Big Trouble. And this is a hybrid between anthurium warquianum and anthurium magnificum. So this one just looks to grow absolutely gigantic. The color has this such deep, dark green hue to it. It's so, so stunning. I've seen some people in Australia have it, but other than that, I haven't seen anyone else breed it here in the US except for Jay. So I really hope I can get one from him one day. And the other Jay hybrid I would really like is his triple hybrid. So this particular hybrid is one part purple velvet marmoratum hybrid, and that was hybridized with Anthurium warquianum. So it's just basically a triple threat. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So like Big Trouble, it has a gorgeous, like velvety, deep green hue to it. It looks absolutely neon. I absolutely love this one, the length of it. It really has the best traits from all the parents. So the next anthurium I would like is anthurium macrolobium. Macro, macrolobium. <laughs> so I actually did some research on this plant and on the Aeroid website, um, I found that it is actually a hybrid between Pediteradiatum and Clarinervium. Now, this to me was strange because I do have one of those and this particular one isn't as, they don't look the same. <laughs> So my hybrid actually looks more like a clarinervium and a pterodactyl. And what I mean by that is the pterodactyl's edges are much more muted and less fingerly like than the pediteradiatum. The pediteradiatum itself, if you own one of these, you'll know it's very stringy. And it's strange to me that obviously this hybrid doesn't take after it that much. It makes sense for the macrolobium to have that in it. Now mine is supposed to be a hybrid of Steve Nock and Marie Nock did confirm that it was a clarinervium and pediteradiatum. If that is true, it could mean that it could have been bred multiple times and it's more muted, or it could just be a natural variation where it just looks more different. It takes one of its parents' genes more than the other. And that definitely will happen with anthurium kind of breeding. When you cross-pollinate anthurium, sometimes they're going to look more like just one plant than the other one. So that's something to look out for. You're really going to have to just like hope and wish that certain features really do come through. And if they do come through, it's something that you're going to have to... I'm sorry, I got distracted by my one cat burrowing outside under pillows because he got cold. <laughs> When you have features that do show through that you do want to enhance, it's something that you're going to have to keep up. You're going to have to take a particular one of those offspring and continue to grow more of that one. When you'll have a batch, they could come out different. It just really all depends. And I think that's fascinating. So the next one is Magnificum Norte. So Bagana Pot Plants just posted this one. It's so dark. It reminds me of a Regali in its darkness, but its shape is so different. It's almost kind of like a teardrop with this little wispy end and it looks beautiful and so majestic and I absolutely love it. I don't have another one like it. I have only one Anthurium that is a mystery hybrid that does have a wisp to the end to it and that is the one I call Stormy and <laughs> I absolutely love her little wispy. So my next one is Anthurium lucronium, lucronium, and this is basically one that looks very similar to Clarinervium. They are both from Mexico. The main differences besides the texture is going to be the sinus. It's much more open on this one than the Clarinervium is, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love that shape. I love very open sinuses like that. I think they have this very, very um, kind of just a regal aspect to them. You'll notice I think of anthuriums often as regal or majestic. I had to save him from the outside. As soon as I opened the door, he ran. <laughs> I know, buddy. Buddy. He's so happy. <laughs> Big cat. So this next one is one that Velvet Jungle PDX owns, and I absolutely love this plant. <laughs> it is the Anthurium Portalae, and oh my gosh, it just looks so different from other Anthuriums. And kind of like the wispy end that I like, it's the, the length 
This is an absolutely stunning plant. I believe she purchased her recent one from Jay, which got pretty expensive, but so worth it. I'm so happy for her. Glad she has it. I hope I can come across it one day. I know Bogana Pot Plants was selling it at one point for an exceedingly high number. Look a bit different too. Not sure um, if his was mixed with something or maybe that's how it kind of evolves to look like, but I'll post a picture right here of his as well. But absolutely stunning plant, just gorgeous. So next I have the hybrid Anthurium Dressleri and Forgettii. So this particular one I adore. It has this very pebble texture to the leaves. It's beautiful, it's still velvety, it's round, it's everything. <laughs> Um, I definitely haven't seen this one here. It's one I've definitely seen in Australia more online, but oh god, like someone needs to hybridize it here. I am going to be getting a Dresslery from Jay. It's just not quite ready yet, but I suspect it won't be producing any flowers anytime soon anyway because it is a cutting, and if you don't know, it does take about a year for cuttings of anthuriums to produce any flowers. My next anthurium is the anthurium polkachens. And this one is one that your local plant boy has posted a video on. Oh, that's how I discovered it. It's stunning. It kind of reminds me of anthurium villanoarium where it has these triangular petioles. It's not velvety. It actually has a leathery texture to its leaves, which I have in another anthurium with leathery texture and yes, but I love leathery texture too. And it just looks like such a sturdy and hardy plant and it's absolutely beautiful and I would love to have it. I hope I can come across it one day. I haven't seen it for sale anywhere. So that would be great. Absolutely adore that one. And please go check out his Instagram. He has some fantastic Ethereum videos and puts out amazing and beautiful pictures and great content. And he has a shop called Arium Botanicals that you must check out. So the next one is one that um, probably all of us have been trying to get, and it is the Anthurium Red Crystallinum from NSE Tropicals. Now, <laughs> these restocks are so hard. Like, I think all of us have probably had it in their cart and have lost it. I've seen forums where people are crying about it, so I know the demand is just so high for this plant. And there's only so much she can produce, so I understand that. Enid does have a new feature on her website where it does stay in your cart for 15 minutes now, which is amazing. <laughs> but honestly, even with the last restock she just had, she wasn't selling that particular plant. I was looking for something else. But as soon, I kept reloading the page, and as soon as it was up, both things that I wanted were already in people's carts. <laughs> So really, it's just it's just going to be tough goings when she does restock those red crystallinums. <sighs> so my camera died. My cat's on my seat. Oh, I'm sorry, Pacha. All right, so these last few plants, they're still anthurium, but they're a different kind of anthurium. So what they are is variegated ones. I have never had an interest in variegated anthuriums before, but I've gotten to the point that as an anthurium collector, I feel like it is a box that I must check. <laughs> and honestly, I was on an Instagram account that specializes in variegated anthuriums. And I've actually, I've grown fond of a few of them. So the first one is gonna be the Anthurium papillilaminum, <laughs> variegated. So this one is quite stunning. It also seems to be one of the rarer ones and it just looks breathtaking to me. It's funny because for a while, and I still kind of feel that way. It feels like a variegated anthurium. It's kind of like an abomination of nature <laughs> because I don't know, I just like the regular ones so much that it's crazy to me that anyone would want the variegated one. But now it's kind of appealing too. Also with anthuriums, the variegation isn't stable. So you have to be careful with that. It's gonna be like your Albo Monstera where it's something that you're gonna have to maintain. So, Definitely be prepared for that. It's pricey as well. And then there is the Anthurium clarinervium. And this one I feel like is the most common one. None of them are cheap, of course. I've seen it differ in its variegation pattern. And some I like, some I don't like, but honestly, depending on affordability, I'll probably have to compromise for the one I don't like and hope it grows into one I like. <laughs> because the more variegated that your Anthurium is gonna be, the more pricey it's also gonna be. Now, the last two on my list are gonna be the Anthurium Pedits radiatum and the Anthurium pterodactyl. 
And <laughs> that is because there are Ethereums that I pretty much wouldn't get in their regular form because they don't do anything special for me. I still really like them. It's, I've actually had to hold myself back from buying like the regular forms. But honestly, if I'm gonna get them, I think the variegated form would be the way to go for these ones because they do offer something different. I know, Phil, I know. So I'm trying not to talk too loud because he doesn't like loud sounds. He'll get scared. <laughs> right, Phil? I know, belly rubs. He's like, where's dad? He holds me better. <laughs> So that's pretty much everything on my wish list right now. All the ones that I would want going to 2020. Not to say I won't get other plants, but I'm really, really hoping I do cut back. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where my collection is something that I feel rather content with, and I'm just looking to check certain boxes off my list. I know, buddy. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some of these plants interesting. I'm curious to see what you all have on your wish list. So please comment that down below. If you like this video, please give it a like and please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, this is great. Someone actually just wrote, <laughs> can't see that, but it's, they have heard it pronounced papillilaminum, 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 papillilaminum.